At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Words taken from St. Matthew's Holy Gospel, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Back in the 1970s, heavyweight boxing was king. The promotion and the lead-up to the contests, the exotic locations for these bouts, the unusual personalities, the big build-up for the fight with lots of hard training, special diet, and sparring. But one of the biggest draws regarding this particular sport was the notion of a rematch. Ali and Frazier was such a good contest that a rematch was demanded, required, in fact, by fans after the first fight. With that all being said, when you consider our dearest Lord going out into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, when you realize that he was led into the ring, if you will, to face the devil himself, you need to see this event as a rematch. Our dear Lord is calling Satan out. He's calling out that serpent that defeated Adam in the Garden of Eden in that first contest between man and the enemy of man. There is going to be a rematch in the desert with a new Adam, the God-man, Jesus Christ. And this time, the devil will be humiliated. And it is obvious that our Lord is in training for this rematch with Satan. There will be 40 days of intense prayer, 40 days of a tense fasting and self-denial and being alone, separated from contact with the world and its delights. Now, it's interesting that immediately following our Lord's holy baptism in the Jordan River, he goes off into a barren desert. You would think that after his special anointing of the Holy Ghost, after being acknowledged as the beloved son of the Heavenly Father, after being sort of treated with great dignity and royalty, you would think that Christ Jesus would prepare for his public ministry with a peaceful retreat, perhaps even a nice little oasis with lots of comfort. But no, Christ, the scriptures say, is driven into the desert by the Holy Ghost to face combat. And such combat provides for us a great example. It reminds us of those words of St. Peter in one of his letters, quote, Be sober and alert. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, this combat, this combat of adversaries had actually begun at the birth of our dearest Lord. You see, the devil was a bit slow in catching up to the baby, the divine baby, when he was in the womb of Our Lady. You see, the devil was on the lookout for an unmarried virgin to be the mother of the Messiah. And the Bible is clear in terms of its prophecy. It did say that the Messiah would be born of a physical virgin. But oh, how the good father protected his divine son in the womb of Our Lady by having the ever-virgin mother of God Unite with her most chaste and virginal spouse, St. Joseph. Their marriage included, of course, no physical consummation, but it fooled the devil nonetheless. But while roaming about the world, Satan is troubled early on by reports about angels gathered saying glory to God in the highest and shepherds coming to some cave and even kings from the east glorifying the gift of a newborn king. The evil one responded to this new threat, as we well know, by persuading the evil King Herod to slaughter all the male children aged two years and younger. But again, with the help of good St. Joseph, the Christ child escaped into Egypt. But you have to ask, why would the devil, who is an intellectual giant in some way, why would the devil take on Christ in a rematch? Remember, Christ is literally the Son of God. Christ literally created an angel known as Lucifer before that angel fell and became the devil. Why would the devil ever try to tempt Jesus and just as he tempted Adam? Jesus cannot sin. He is literally God. 
literally the second person of the Blessed Trinity, God come in the flesh. But the devil does not know this. The devil does not know that our dearest Lord is God. In the desert, Jesus is hungry. He's thirsty. He's fatigued. How could God be so very weak? And so Satan can't resist. And so he begins the battle. Now, Satan is a good fighter, but his challenger is infinitely better. The devil fights Christ, and this is so important for us as we face Lent. The devil fights Christ in the exact same way that he fought the old Adam. Doesn't change. Worked one time, he'll see if it'll work again. Satan begins with, if you will, a punch to the stomach. In the garden, Satan showed Adam and Eve the apple. Begin with the belly. Soften it up. Soften up your opponent. And the Bible says that the fruit was pleasing to the eyes and good for eating. But when Satan tries this with Christ saying, you must be hungry, so change these rocks into bread if you are the son of God. Notice the if, if you are the son of God. But our Lord counterpunches using sacred scripture. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Satan loses round one. Christ will continue his fast for the glory of his heavenly father, but also for our example. And so Satan comes out for a second round and tries again. The old Adam fell to a sin called vain glory. That is a sin that trusts in one's own powers. Satan had said to the old Adam, don't worry if you eat this fruit. You're not going to die. You can handle it. But Christ, even though he is literally God, does not show vainglory. He is brought to the top of a temple by Satan and told to throw himself down. For the angels, the scriptures say, will take care that he does not hurt himself. But Christ refuses and says again, quoting scripture, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Satan loses round two. Round three comes, and Satan tries one last attack. He will use the sin of pride like he did to the old Adam. In the garden, the devil said to Adam and Eve, if you eat the fruit, you shall be like gods. Satan now brings Christ to the top of a mountain and promises Christ every kingdom on earth. You can be the ruler of the earth, but first... You must kneel and worship me. But Christ does not fall to temptation. He will not be prideful. And Christ simply says, get behind me, Satan. You are to worship God alone. Well, Satan goes back to the corner, having lost all three rounds. But Satan would return again. Because Satan would come back with great fury especially on Calvary. Now, our dearest Lord turns back all the attacks of the evil one. He gains victory in the rematch. He passes the test in the desert, refusing to break his holy fast, refusing to embrace vainglory, and yes, refusing to bow before the devil. The devil, the serpent, retreats in confusion. Satan is confused, for he still does not know about this individual. Is he a prophet? Is he just another holy man? Or literally, is he the son of God? But having retreated, the devil will return later. The devil will rise up and raise up a man named Judas to betray our Lord. The devil will even see that the Jewish high priests and their mobs and Pontius Pilate will have our Lord crucified upon the cross. The devil, in his blindness, thinks that he has beaten his opponent. But his victory over Christ is very, very short-lived. You see, within very moments of his death, the devil realizes his humiliating defeat. The soul of Christ, the Bible tells us, immediately descended to the dead, to limbo, to the very edge of hell, 
and released all the holy men, all the holy women held captive. The power of Satan, hell, and eternal death are broken forever. Well, having lost this great battle, Satan still looks to fight. He is like a cornered rat. He still madly flails away. Satan looks, therefore, to tempt and destroy other Christs, Christians. As he tempted Christ in the desert, so he will tempt us in the exact same ways during these days of Lent, these 40 days for us in the desert. Dear people, our Lord said the following, No servant is greater than his master. If Christ fasted, if he prayed, if he wept for our sins, if he gave the gift of alms to pay for our salvation, namely the very drops of his most precious blood upon the Holy Cross, then we must imitate him. In the desert, our Lord did penance, not for himself, for he needs no penance. Christ did penance to pay for the price of sin, but also to give us an example and to strengthen us for our own acts of penance. There is no oasis in this earthly pilgrimage of ours. The baptized have become children of God, but we, like Christ, are driven into the desert, especially during the season of Lent, to practice more prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Because the devil is troubled with us. He has heard reports that you're practicing the faith, and he realizes that you're seeking to save your very souls. Let us finally defeat the devil in Christ by living a penitential life until we reach that true oasis, which is heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.